Hey guys, Tim here from TimKipTutorials.com and welcome to another Android development tutorial. In this lesson we're going to be setting up our first Android project using Android Studio. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up Android Studio which we've installed in previous tutorials. If you do not have Android Studio installed please check those out. And now we see our Welcome to Android Studio dialog. We're going to click on New Project. And there's a couple of settings we need to set up before we can continue. First, we have our application name. This is um, where you're going to put whatever your application is going to be. So I'm just going to call mine Test App. And under Module Name, this can be whatever you would like. It's just a placeholder that is used um, by Android Studio and people usually use the same name as their application without any spaces. So I'm just going to leave it the same. And for the package name, this is a unique identifier for your app and it must remain the same throughout your application if it's installed on any device. So it can be updated or anything along those lines. So for now I'm just going to leave it as com.example.testapp. You would want to change that to be specific to what your application is. Project location, I'm just going to leave it the same, but you can place it anywhere you'd like just by hitting this square over here to browse. Now for minimum required SDK, that is where you can choose what the minimum required SDK will be for your application. So say you have, you want to support a 2.1 version phone. You would click the minimum SDK as apps API 7. If you didn't want to support anything above 3.0, you would just say your minimum SDK level is 11. But for now, I'm just going to leave it at API, API 7. Because further down, I'm just going to, I'm going to be writing applications that's going to be using backwards compatibility to support down to 2.1. Your target SDK is the highest level of API that your application is known to work with. So in this case, the highest level will be 4.2 for me because that's the only SDK I have on here at this time. And for the theme, we're just going to leave it the same. This is a preset hollow light with the dark action bar. You can also do hollow dark, hollow light with no action bar or none. But actually, I'm just going to set it's none for now so we don't have to do anything. If you'd like to create a custom launcher icon, you can do that as well, but we're not going to create any custom icons for your application, so I'm just going to uncheck this box. We're going to leave create activity checked and we're going to leave everything else unchecked. Go ahead and hit next. And here you can choose what type of activity you're going to have, a blank activity, a full screen, or a master and detail flow. If you click on both those, you can read the descriptions to see what's different about each one. We're just going to click blank activity. Go ahead and hit next. And here's where you can um, name your activity and your layout. The activity is going to be the class um, name that we're creating. So in this case we're just going to say instead of main activity we're just going to say home screen or something like that. And this will layout name will be the XML file which will be have the layout for your home screen if that makes sense. So your layout name will be used so I'm just going to name this home underscore screen. And for navigation type we're just going to leave it as none. You can also pick fixed tabs and swipe, scroll, scrollable tabs and swipe, or drop down. But we're just going to leave it as none for now. Go ahead and hit finish. And Android Studio will begin building your project. Okay, once Android Studio has built your project, it's going to start loading your project into the IDE. And this may take some time depending on your um, computer required requirements. The first thing you notice is that it's going to be running some processes down here. This could take a while depending on your computer as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and let those finish. As you can see, we still have two processes running. Okay, now that Android Studio has completed building and setting up your project, we'll go ahead and see what's on the screen. We have our home screen.java, which is the class file that we set up at the beginning. Basically, it we have a public class of home screen, which is the same name as your file. Those two are important, they have to remain the same, which is extending an activity. An activity in Android is the screens that pop up on the um, Android device that display all of your content. 
So inside of our activity, we have a couple of methods here. We have a protected onCreate method and a public onCreate options menu. We do not need, at this point, the options menu, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove that. You can just leave it or you can remove it. It doesn't matter one way or the other. So what we have going on in the onCreate is we are going to have a super onCreate, which passes everything into the super method of this onCreate method that we're overriding. And then we also have a set content view, which is loading in a layout file named home underscore screen, which if we remember when we first set up our project, we named our layout file home underscore screen. So what that's doing is it's op er, when the application open, it creates your view and it puts the view to the same as the home screen. So if we go over here to home screen.xml, you can see we have a relative layout and a simple text area that's been pre-generated for us. As the preview on the right over here generates, we can go through what a little bit what this text area code is doing. So we have Android layout width, and that's the width of the text view, is set to wrap content. There's three different settings. You have wrap content, you also have fill parent, and you also have match parent. Now the difference between these, fill parent and match parent are pretty much the same. It will take whatever uh, container that the text view in, in this case it's a relative layout, and it will fill it or match it. So you can see over here this blue bar is extending all the way to the side of the screen. If we just do wrap content, you can see now that the blue bar is just wrapped just around the text alone. Same thing with layout height, wrap content, or we have fill parent or match parent. Now you can see it goes all the way to the bottom of the screen. We're just going to leave it both as wrapped content for now. And the next setting is Android text. We have hello world right there, but if you were to click on it, it says at string slash hello underscore world. And what that is doing is it's drawing from a string folder, or a string.xml file, and it's accessing a variable name that we have called hello underscore world. So where exactly is this text coming from? It says hello world over here, but it's not saying at string slash hello world on the device. So it's sort of interesting. If you go over here, we have our Java folder and we have our res folder. Inside of your res folder, you're going to have a values folder. Inside of your values folder, you're going to have a strings.xml file. Notice how this says at string. It's referencing the strings file. They sort of go hand in hand. If you sort of get confused, just look at string and strings. Just match them up and you're good to go. So inside of your strings.xml file, you can see we have a resource object with a couple of different nodes inside of it. We have three string nodes, each with a name. This one is app name, this one's action settings, and this one's hello world. This one should seem familiar, hello underscore world. So what is that? whatever is inside of this node will be displayed in the hello world string reference. So if we were to change this to say hello YouTube, and we were to save this file, and now if we go back to the home screen, you'll notice that hello world has now changed into hello YouTube. You can also, instead of using an external file, you can just hard code your strings in here. So hello YouTube from Android. Let's do that. You can do it that way, or you can hard code it this way. Whatever way is fine. There's different people say that you should use external files, but if you're only using it in one spot, there's no sense of just hard coding it in here. Just go ahead and do it, and I might get some criticism for saying that, but if it's easier that way, just do it. Okay, so that's the general layout of this application. Nothing too fancy going on, we just have a text view on the screen. So we can run this right now. All we do is hit run, and we wait for the ABD to come, or for the launch screen to come up. So we can actually test this out on the emulator provided by Android Studio. Now every time you hit run, what Android Studio is going to do, it's going to recompile all of your code, and it's going to build your project. As you can see down here, it's, it has a Gradle build using tasks. So what it's doing is it's, you can watch this little progress bar, and it will compile your project so it can be output onto a device. Now you can see this option menu here for choose device. You can say choose a running device, which there's none located, or you can launch an emulator. 
and under Android Virtual Device it says None. So that's sort of a problem. Since we don't have anything to run it on, we cannot access it. It's easily solved by hitting this square right here, which will bring up a dialog to create an Android emulator. So here we have a box for Android Virtual Device Manager. All you need to do is hit New on this side, and another dialog will come up and with an Android Virtual Device name. You can just do it whatever you would like. I'm just going to say Test. And now you can choose which device you want to emulate. In my case, I'm just going to stick with the Nexus 7, or I'm sorry, the Nexus S, because that has a smaller resolution for my screen. My target will be Android 3, or 2.3.3, which is API level 10. I also have the ability to pick Android 4.2.2, which is API level 17. And that's all you're going to need to set up. And it says no target selected, so I need to go up here and say CPU, and I'm just going to use ARM. You can leave all the other settings the same. You can give it a front camera if you like, a back camera, how much RAM or, or how much memory it's going to use when it's emulating the internal storage of the emulated device, and if it has an SD card or not, you can specify a size, and then we can just hit OK, and this little dialog comes up and you just hit OK again. You can hit this X right here, and now you can see on the bottom you should have test in your drop down menu. Go ahead and click test, and then hit OK. Android Studio will now launch your emulator, and it does take a little bit of time to start up, so I'm going to come back when that is all completed and ready to go. Okay, our emulator has started to boot up. And if everything goes well, the application will automatically start as it's installed. So we'll give it a little bit more time. And as you can see, our application comes up. We have test app, and it says hello YouTube from Android. So that's pretty much it. You've just started your, or created a project in Android Studio, and we've successfully tested out our application on an emulator. So on a side note, if you're wondering how my, when I created my emulator, why I had 2.3.3 and I had versions 4.2.2 available for, as my target SDK. A quick tip, you can go here to launch your emulator, or your emulator, so AVD Manager. It's a little purple screen with a little Android icon underneath it, and that's the same screen that you got before. You can create new devices or you can edit or delete your other ones, or you can start the emulator without actually installing or running an application. That's where you'd go for that. But under right next to that, you have an SDK manager. Go ahead and click on that. And this will load up every um, SDK that is available that has been downloaded to your local machine. So as you can see, I have Android SDK tools, SDK platform tools, SDK build tools, I have all these things that I have installed here. So if you notice, I have SDK Platform for Android 4.2.2 installed. And if you scroll down, I have Android 2.3.3 installed. If you wanted any other version of Android, say you wanted the latest version of 4.3, you can just go ahead and check this box to download everything available, or you can go and click just download the SDK plat Platform, and now always download the ARM system image. So go ahead and hit that, hit install, and those will install your new packages on your machine, and then you can create your emulator based off of that SDK version. Same thing goes if you want a lower version. Say you wanted anything lower than 2.3.3. You can get all the way down to 1.5, it looks like. You can also have extras down here, like the Android support repository or the Android support library. Those have also been automatically installed on my machine when I installed Android Studio. You can there's a lot of things you can do here, like Google USB drivers, uh, billing library, license library for Google Play, Google Play services. Just take a look at those, and if you're interested in any of those, and you're wanting to test your application on those Android versions, go ahead and install them. So that's just a little tip of where that's located. So I hope you enjoyed the short tutorial on um, creating a project and running your first application. I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.